Hello, my name is Cullen Dole. Today I'll be doing my, my research video presentation. In this video presentation, I'll be using William Shakespeare's Othello and Leo Africanus' History and Description of Africa to explain the struggles of the African American people the African American people had in order to push for racial inequality and the struggles they have in the 21st century. These two stories were written in the mid 16th century and the early 17th century, and around those times, slavery was much different. When Leo Africanus wrote The History and Description of Africa in the 16th century, slavery was much more mild to what it was in the 17th century. In the 1600s, white men began buying slaves and helped to help them grow their tobacco. The first black slaves came over in about 1619 and they were, they were purchased and treated like servants. Then they were freed after working a set number of months and years. These 16th century slaves did not have a quote unquote life of slavery. They were free, they were fed enough to get through a working day. They had shelter to sleep in at night and then they were freed. Around the times, there was also no law that said that an offspring of a, of a man or woman who was a slave had to become a slave, meaning if a, if one of them had a child, it was not tied to that slave plantation at all, that, that plantation of slavery system at all. These quote unquote life, light slave laws really will show in Leo Africanus' history and description of Africa. Throughout the story, Leo Africanus talks down on the African American race a lot, but he also is seen saying good things about them. In the beginning of the story, Leo describes the African Americans as a beastly kind of life, being utterly destitute of the reason of dexterity, of wit, and of all art. This is an obvious form of bashing the entire race. But then later in the story, he, say, he says that they have a rich culture and the coast of the Mediterranean Sea is filled with good arts and science. I believe that him going back and forth completely hating on the whole African American race to then complimenting them on their culture and arts and their scientists really shows how the time in which you lived in portrays how you think of them. Now this was all happening in the 16th century. William Shakespeare's Othello was written in the 17th century, a time in which slavery was much, much different. During the time Othello was written, slavery had taken a drastic turn for the worse. There were now much more plantations and they were much bigger. This meant there was a much stronger need for slaves. The need for labor was so heavy that the purchasing of them was completely thrown away. Now, if they needed them, they had to come. The lifestyle also got much worse. The work days began getting much longer. And much, the work days much, began getting much longer, and with much more slaves coming in, that meant there was much less food for each person. Around this time, also, the Virginia Assembly passed a set of black codes or slave laws, where which institutionalized a lifelong slavery and stipulated the offspring of the female slave must inherit their mother's slavery. And so you from there, I think this harshness of slavery at this time really is shown in William Shakespeare's story. Because the slaves at this time were treated so badly, William Shakespeare did not know anything different, and he just straight up bashes the whole African-American race. And he does this through a character named Lago. Lago is a man who talks down on Othello the whole time, which is an African-American man, and he talks down on him the whole time. He's even seen calling the whole African-American race dogs and says that they have no better use than to work for the white man. As I said at this time, slavery was no longer being bought like it used to be in the 16th century. They are now being kidnapped from Africa and brought over to the white land to work at their plantations. This, is, this just shows how ruthless some of these slave owners were at the time. And this show this could be a reason why Shakespeare portrayed this this character in Lago to be such a ruthless man and so racist toward the African American race. A little bit over a century later, after William Shakespeare wrote Othello, slavery began to decline, and began to decline, and people began to realize how deep wrong and dehumanizing this all was. By the early 19th century, America's Western expansion and abolish movement provoked a great debate over slavery that would end in a very, very nasty civil war. After the civil war was over, there was over 4 million black African American men and women that were freed, became free of slavery. I think both William Shakespeare and Leo Africanus were both amazing writers, but in present time, it is very hard to comprehend and understand that one human being could be owned by a, another human being. <sighs> Being property is hard to understand. Both of these both of these stories were written in times 
in which this was uh, acceptable. But after doing some research, it is easy to understand how one person would, would say this was written in the 16th century because how these slaves were raised or how these slaves were ran. And then reading the next story, you'd understand why they were portrayed how the way they were in the 17th century. Uh, Leo Africanus portrayed his, his slaves as much a... Uh, as they had a uh, they had an objective like they, they had a reason for being there and once they're done with what they needed to do they would be released and uh you can definitely tell in his story that that's what it's like and then you get to Othello written by William Shakespeare and he just you know he just talks bad about them the whole time and it, it's 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 very harsh how they're treated and stuff like that thank you